Lately, if you've been watching disc golf, you've certainly seen some advertisements for rangefinders, something new coming into disc golf, and I'm pretty sure you've seen the Bushnell 850 rangefinder advertisement by Paul Uliberry, Kona Panis, and others, and they state that these rangefinders are going to save you some strokes. Therefore, you've probably been asking yourself, do you need a rangefinder? Well, today on Just Disc, we're going to let you guys know everything about rangefinders for disc golf, talking about the benefits, drawbacks, if you should buy one, and how. So let's get into it. Now, there are many benefits to a rangefinder, but the main and the staple benefit is that it gives you a direct distance to any object you point it at. So if you want to know the distance to the basket, to a bunker, or perhaps a tree branch, a rangefinder is going to give you that exact distance. And when you know specific distances, this allows your mind to think about other important factors like disc selection, throw type, and the effects of the environment. Therefore, when you mess up a shot, you're going to know immediately that it was your throw that was the issue and not the disc selection. And in the end, this breeds confidence and helps improve your mental game. Rangefinders are also beneficial if you're someone who relies on the distance written on the whole signs. This is because courses change over time and not always the signs. Sometimes the tee pads are moved, sometimes the baskets are changed for a specific season, sometimes things just get moved around. So relying on the signs often gives you the incorrect information. And from playing ball golf for around seven years and now disc golf for about 15, I've learned very quickly that the yardage or the distance on the signs are often incorrect. And Lindsay and I actually went out and tested this at our home course. We took the distance from the signs as well as U-Disc, and then we used the range finder to figure out the actual distances. And what we found wasn't surprising. Sometimes the holes were off by just a few feet, maybe sometimes up to 10 feet, and other times as off as 50 to 70 feet. So you really can't be trusting those hole signs or even the U-Disc app. And one way that we got these precise distances and another benefit of a rangefinder, or at least most of them, is that we used a slope measuring feature, which adds distance if trying to throw uphill, and it subtracts distance if trying to throw downhill. So it makes that adjustment for you. Another benefit of a rangefinder is that they are often easier to use than applications on your phone or any kind of GPS program. It's simple, you just point, shoot, and you get that data. So you're not wasting time and you can just go on and choose the right disc for the right shot. Lastly, rangefinders are just great for doing field work and figuring out your actual distances. Now, GPS programs like UDIS are good, but they're not always that accurate. Often they're off by quite a bit. So when you know the distances of your disc, it's just going to boost that mental confidence. So just as there are benefits to rangefinders, there are drawbacks as well. One of the first drawbacks to using a rangefinder is that it only gives you the distance in a straight line. So if, for instance, you're blocked by some foliage, a tree, which is often the case in disc golf, you're not going to be able to get that correct distance. Or if, for instance, the basket is over a hill, you're just not going to be able to tell how far it actually is. And that is why some people prefer GPS rangefinders. Another drawback to rangefinders is that they only give you the number. They don't tell you what disc is ideal for that number distance. They don't tell you what type of throw would be ideal, right? So it's a bit of a learning curve with rangefinders. And if you put the time in and you do some field work and you throw a disc many times, different days, different conditions, then it's going to be useful to you. But if you're not one who likes to practice and really understand their distances, that's definitely going to be a drawback. And figuring out your distances for disc golf is a lot more difficult when compared to ball golf, or at least that's my opinion. Disc golf, you have multiple discs, you know, over 20 sometimes, different plastics. They wear out over time, so they change their flight, which in turn is going to affect that distance, or even just the fact that it's a bigger surface area, then the environment is going to affect it a lot more than for ball golf. 
Another drawback to rangefinders, which really ties into that last point, is that they can overcomplicate things. When you start incorporating numbers for shorter distances, it can really throw you off and affect your mental game. Distances in disc golf, usually around 300 feet, a lot easier to judge that distance when compared to ball golf where it's around 300 yards. So it's a little bit more of a feel game and sometimes adding that range finder over complicates things, sometimes slows down the game and just frustrates some people. Now the last drawback is that range finders just cost money. They have gone down in price over the last few years, but they're still gonna cost you a few hundred dollars and not everybody has that money just laying around. And if you don't, I would just stick to the GPS technology of the UDisc app. It gives you decent enough measurements and that's enough for most people. Now after hearing all of those benefits and all of those drawbacks, should you or should you not buy a rangefinder? Honestly, it's not a simple yes or no answer, but here's what we came up with. You should buy a rangefinder if you travel a lot or you like to play a lot of different courses, such as a professional. Another reason would be if the courses that you play are changing up on a regular basis, the tee pads, the baskets, or just the course in general changes, good idea to have that rangefinder. And the last reason is if a lot of the holes that you play are par fours or par fives, because after your drive, you may end up in locations that you're not used to and you don't know the given distance to a certain object. You shouldn't be getting a range finder if you're a beginner or you've only been playing for a few years and you're still trying to understand the flight of some of your discs. And if you throw one disc multiple times in a field and you get a lot of different distances, again, there's no real reason to get a range finder because you're not consistent enough yet. And if you have a course that has just par threes or that never really changes, there really is no reason for a range finder because you're often gonna always know those distances. Now we would like to talk to you about how to go about buying a rangefinder since there are so many that are out there. And I just wanna flat out tell you that you do not need to buy an expensive rangefinder like the Bushnell 850. I, for instance, bought a rangefinder from eBay about seven years ago. It's worked and done wonders for me all throughout ball golf and now into disc golf. But I also recently bought a new rangefinder for $110 Canadian plus tax, and it has all of the same features of a Bushnell, but at half the price. The only drawback is that it only gives you meters and yards like a lot of the other rangefinders found on Amazon. So if you don't want to do that conversion, you're definitely going to want to go with that Bushnell 850. Well, that sums up today's video and we really hope that you learned something. If we forgot something about rangefinders, let us know in the comments below, or if you're just looking at buying one, we would love to know which one you're thinking of getting. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Merci beaucoup et à bientôt.